Well, I've got to say this is probably one of the strangest things I think I've ever done to go on a road trip around Italy with a complete stranger. I feel that I know you a little after I've read your novel, but why did you decide to come? Well, I suppose I just finished that job with the winery. I had a bit of free time from our emails. I realised that you're well read, you're interesting. Well, I mean, you're a librarian, so of course you're well read. And I kind of like the idea that you've planned it all, but I mean, when are you going to tell me what we're actually doing? Well, I like the idea to just let the adventure unfold and I picked a few places, just see it as a surprise every day. Well, if it's anything like this, I mean, this is fantastic. And this local wine, this is, you know, the, the Fuman grape, it's, um, it's like got a red, it's a red grape, red skin, but also red flesh. So it's, um, it gives a really intense color. And this one's very light on tannin. Well, I like the idea of an adventure unfolding. Yes, who knows, maybe this trip will even get you back to writing. I don't know about that. But look, how about we play a game? This is a little psychological test that a friend told me, and it's meant to reveal something about yourself. So you want to give it a go? Yes. So what's your favorite color? Red. And name three adjectives to describe red. Hot, lively, and sensual. Is that how you see yourself? Oh my God. Because <laughs> that's supposed to be oh, yes. how you see yourself. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. The next question is, what's your favorite animal? An elephant. And how would you describe an elephant? Peaceful, strong and beautiful. Is that what you're looking for in a partner? Yes, maybe. Are you at least going to tell me what we're going to do tomorrow? Well, we will stay another day here in Aosta, in Coin. It's a very special place. It's in the mountains and it's um, different. It's unique. That's all you're telling me? Mm -hmm. it always be like this? I have the feeling that we work a whole year to be able to travel for two weeks. Yeah, but you know, I've traveled a lot and I think we need something to be passionate about. Endless travel becomes very boring. Yes. Yesterday, when I asked you about your novel, you didn't seem very interested to talk about it. Well, I mean, every week someone contacts me about that novel, telling me how they thought it was so great. But the reality is, for me, it was a financial disaster. I mean, you know, for a first-time writer, it's really hard to make any money. And I suppose I lost passion for it. I, I don't know if I have anything to say anymore. Mm. What about you? I mean, are you happy with your work? Well, I'm a librarian now for 15 years, and I also have the feeling that I, I need a new challenge. What do you mm. think you'd do? <laughs> Well, actually, I thought about writing a novel. You're kidding me. <laughs> well, uh, maybe. Have you got any ideas? I thought maybe this trip will uh, give me a few ideas. Wow. That's going to make it interesting. <laughs> we'll see. Fantastic. I mean, how did you find this place? Well, I thought it's a good <clears throat> place to stop for lunch on the Lake Como. They have great food and the wine is superb. They are, I would say, it's one of the best wineries on the Lake Como. 
Oh. We have uh, three wines, a red, white and rosé. You know what? The red one was used at uh, George Clooney's wedding. No way. Yes. You're kidding. Mm -hmm. It is a good wine. You know, tasting that wine is a very simple test to tell, say, a $10 wine from a $50 wine. Have a mouthful and you just count. 1,000, 2,000, and you just see how long the flavour will linger in your mouth. So a good wine, you might go, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000 or 5,000. A bad wine, you know, 1,000, it's gone. And that is a good wine. And the food, whew, this is great. Well, actually, there's also another reason I uh, came here. I was thinking about interviewing Signore Travi, the owner of this place, who is also a member of the local uh, slow food um, um, movement. Because of my book, because having Italian roots, I... Your was, book? You've um, got an idea for your book now. <laughs> yes, it came to me. <laughs> On the trip, that's yes. wow. Today, can you reveal a little bit about your idea? Well, the idea is, um, you know, the Italian lifestyle, la dolce vita. I, I would like to explore what this is. And, um, nice idea, and we're we're living it here. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. So this is just a typical. Uh, cake from the Alps that uh, typically is uh, bread uh, with some nuts, sugar and butter and you, during uh, let's say winter mm -hmm. we put that yes. on, on, on the top, just a few drops yeah. in this. Mm. And you also uh, Yeah, we made the graph. Thank you. Are you sure that this is not the last one without grappa? <laughs> it's very good. How would you define the Dolce Vita? The Dolce Vita is uh, what we're trying to promote and what we are trying to develop in this small portion of uh, Lake Como the northern part of the country is basically promote the culture of uh, food, good drink, uh, the family, the, let's say, the joy to, to be alive and to enjoy uh, the time you are spending with your family, having fun and a good moment of life. So, after your interview today, do you feel as though you're getting closer to realizing what La Dolce Vita is? Well, something I really liked what Signore Travi said today is uh, that good things need time. Like preparing a traditional dish needs time. And, but in general, like Italians hold on to their traditions. Every region has its own speciality, uh, food-wise. Like here, we are eating now a dish of three different fish and they are all out of the lake. And it's fantastic, all done differently, yeah. Exactly, yes. Mm. Mm. I mean, it was very interesting, you know, our discussion today and how he's uh, using the moon, the phases of the moon for his planting of his grapes, for when he harvests. I mean, that's really unique. I mean, it's, I found that really fascinating that they, he really believed that if you do it at the right time, it's going to taste better. And this is coming from generations of, you know, that they've come to this conclusion. But your whole idea about, you know, Italians having the answer. Let me say a couple of words. Mafioso. Corruption. You know, the economy. Yes, but I would like to find the answer more on a personal level. So you think on a personal level, yes. Italians have got the answer? I think, you know, Signore Travi gave us his whole afternoon. And um, 
what uh, how Bob Dylan said, uh, success is when you get up in the morning and you do what the hell you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're on our what? Our third bottle of wine, <laughs> our fifth course of food. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Cheers. First time in Venice, how do you like it? Well, there's certain places in the world that are unique. You know, Machu Picchu, Great Wall of China, and Venice is in that category. So, you know, when you come here, I suppose you've got to expect the tourist hordes. But, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you're going to find La Dolce Vita here for your book. I think you're more going to... More likely to find an expensive soggy sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that's not all. I didn't tell you everything about our Magica mystery tour. Oh. There's something more, yes. Oh, really? Why I came here. It's, um, you know, I think that uh, apart from tradition, family is also a very important pillar uh, in Italian lifestyle. Oh, and, um, oh so you've got an another chapter for your book. Yes, We've I done think the tradition chapter, you're moving on to family. Yes, I think uh, we should also... Do you really think family is that important though? I mean, I, for me, I think family. Family is <laughs> putting a bunch of people into a room who don't get on and telling them, all right, <laughs> spend, <laughs> spend your lifetime together and just work it out. <laughs> I mean, this, this is like my idea of family, you know? <laughs> yes. Might be true sometimes, but if it works, I think family could be like a stabilizer in life. You know, when it, when life Stops gets stops the gondola well, rocking, eh? Exactly. Yeah. All right. And so, how are you going to do your your family story? Family of my father's, they are originally from Italy, one hour north from here. Oh wow! And uh, last time I have seen them, or I visited them, I was a child and. I wanted to go back and uh, meet them. I was wondering how important roots are when your ancestors immigrated. Is it so? Do you do you feel an affinity to your father's Italian roots? Yes, I do, and I want to explore that. So this is going to be a big journey for you, meeting relatives you've never seen before, <laughs> seeing your father's family house. Wow. Sento la, la mia famiglia. Ciao. Paola. Ciao. Mia moglie. Ciao. Ciao. Questo è mio figlio Enrico. 
piacere. E questo è il piccolo Leo. Ciao Leo. Prego, accomodatevi. Andiamo, Andiamo dentro. Prego. Lui è stato uno dei, dei dispersi della, della seconda guerra mondiale. Era il più giovane. Era il più giovane della, della famiglia, sì. So this is my great grandmother where I got my cults from. This is the picture my dad painted. It hung in our house during my childhood and now we are here and this is the house in front of us. Allora la dolce vita cos'è? Per me è vivere il momento con i cari e con le persone a cui vuoi bene. Secondo me una delle principali cose è essere in salute e stare bene con le persone della famiglia. Prima di tutto avere la salute per poter godere della fortuna, dell'amore e, e avere quindi anche la serenità. Questa per me è la dolce vita. Another one, another one. Ok. Uno. Due, tre. Probably the last place where you can do wild camping in the Cinque Terre. I think it was famous in the 70s. A lot of hippies lived here and now there's a nudist beach. A good one from the Cinque Terre. What do you, how do you find it? It's very good. And it goes with my theory on what makes a good wine. Now imagine the vines growing in this pretty much like gravel soil on these mountain tops. There's a salt air, there's a harsh, harsh sunlight, little water. So the vine's struggling, it's growing, and it's one hope of passing on its progeny, passing on its genes, is to produce the sweetest fruit it possibly can. And have a bird eat that and fly it the hell out of here. <laughs> so it's very good wine, yeah. 
It was great to meet your family yesterday. I mean, even though I don't speak Italian, I think it was very special that some of the, your relatives you'd never met before, you know, that the younger ones, you're only really related by name, and yet they welcomed you in with such hosp hospitality to show you around the town, to give their afternoon. It was, it was really lovely. I, I, I felt jealous. I haven't got that. I wish I could go back to Ireland or, or Cornwall and, and meet some long-lost relatives. Yes, it was great for me. It was an important day. I also found it interesting uh, what they said about the Dolce Vita. For them, it's, uh, it's important to have their loved ones around. And um, today we are going to uh, meet um, a man who lives here. Just behind us on the mountaintop, uh, his house is between two villages, quite secluded. We need uh, to walk 40 minutes to get there on a little narrow road to see what he has to say about um, Dolce Vita because he lives there alone. So whether his idea is different from whether someone living, you know, I suppose like a hermit lifestyle has a different idea of La Dolce Vita than someone in the family life. In Cinque Terre, la Dolce Vita means to eat good food, relax, and live very in touch with the nature. It's important to live of your product, of the ground, in exact manner with the older people that live here. When you need help, when you need something, here in Cinque Terre, if you have not a friend, it's a very big problem. So it's important to stay together. Mm -hmm. And in the village, each day, I go in the village to meet the order. If I don't go in the village, they say, oh, Pier Paolo, don't come, why? And they come to understand why I don't go in the village. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is a family. The sense of La Dolce Vita, I think that is like a big family. Each problem is not so big to think too much. Each problem can be solved, we think. And it's not so important for Don't Sleep. Ah, uh, the local wine. Uh, yes, this is our uh, Vino della Chiesa after the uh, the church at the bottom of the valley, built in 1270. Beautiful. It's a Sangiovese Merlot blend, and yeah, we're very proud of it and looking forward to making lots of other exciting wines in the future. We've, um, I've always wanted to, to be involved in making wine, and you know, it's a dream come true to, to be able to drink the wine and look down over the vineyards. 
Yes, I mean, you made the move that many people dream of doing. You uh, moved from Australia to Italy. And um, doesn't it require a lot of courage? I mean, it's stepping out of your comfort zone. It's maybe taking a risk. It was a risk, you know, and, you know, we left jobs and, um, you know, we we left homes, left our families, but we knew, I think, all the time that, you know, when I first saw this property, I realised it was just beautiful, it was what we wanted, the views, and we knew in the end that if we had to, we could go back to, you know, being accountants or being a teacher, and the market at the time was very good, so we could easily have um, sold it. So it was a risk, but I think I knew in my heart of hearts that, it would be fine. Seeing your girls, they're like little Italians. Yeah. They, you know, they speak Italian very well. For you two, was it a little bit harder to, to fit into the local community? Yeah, I think, so. well, I mean, it takes time to develop your language skills. And we, we worked hard and we said some terrible things at the beginning, but we, we, you know, we persevered and we talked and we talked to the parents on school pickups and we, um, you know, we two children are born here, so you have to learn to, you know, you go through the hospital system. It's been a, a slow process. The girls will tell you we've still got a long way to go. <laughs> you know, we'll sometimes write something and we'll say, is that correct? And they'll go and show the other one and say, look what they've written. And they're all <laughs> with laughter and then they'll come back and correct it. We struggle to talk about and understand Italian politics, but I think most people in this country are like that. <laughs> Italy is one of the best places in the world for kids to grow up, you know, their whole all-encompassing family attitude yeah you know if I tell you if, if your kids cause make noise in a restaurant everybody thinks it's charming mm -hmm. you know I think we wanted them to grow up didn't we outside and with animals yeah, and in the countryside isn't mm. it? so have we found a dolce vita here yeah I think for us it's you know if we were back working in the UK or in Australia being an accountant, I would have had to go out to work and, you know, work those long hours in the offices. David, maybe being a teacher, it's very hard to live on a teacher's salary, so he probably would have been at home with the children. And this way, you know, we can have that life where both of you are there with the children in the morning, both of you are there in the evenings. And when you're working, we still work long hours, but working for ourselves, we're not working for somebody else. So it is, for us, it's a great way to bring up a family and, it's a, and a great way to, yeah, we think it's a good life. Well, cheers to that and cheers to a great cheers. a great wine too, David. Fantastic. Yeah. This is it. This is where it happened. The largest ambush in military history. So what happened? The Roman soldiers were camping down here on the lake and Hannibal's army was up here in the hills. You know, a mixture of Celts, Siberians, you know, peoples from all around Europe. They charged down, wiping out half of the, the Roman forces, about 15,000 men of the 30,000. They reckon that there was so much blood that this little stream down here flowed blood red for three days. How do you know all that stuff? I'm a fan of military history. Look, I don't want to discourage you of what you're trying to do with your novel, but, you know, I don't want to play the starving artist. So maybe with your whole idea of La Dolce Vita, maybe you want to look at measures of success. 
because I mean I had you know I appreciate that you like my novel I appreciate that people liked it but I really made no money from it so you know it's not an easy road Scott whatever you say I will write this novel anyway I will take into account your comments about success and the Dolce Vita but I will ignore your negativity about writing our itinerary was secret until now, but I'm pretty sure you will like the next location. It is one of the best wineries in Italy. It's in Montalcino. So come on, Mr. Grumpy Pants, come and let's get drunk. Is there anything else I can do for you? Well, Gio, there is actually something you can do. I have a question. I'm writing a novel and I would like to know what your idea about the Dolce Vita is. Well, Charlotte, you asked me to say what Dolce Vita represents for me. Re Dolce Vita is what I'm living now and in the most amazing landscape, drinking a fantastic wine from Castello di Velona in front of a beautiful home I like you. And as I say to everyone, the 5F represent the essence of Dolce Vita. Friends, family, food and Fiorentina football team. It's very gentle, isn't it? Yeah, it's actually one of the least aggressive wine that you could ever try. It's very gentle on your palate, in your mouth. When you swallow, you wouldn't feel the aggressive tannin, okay? There are many Brunellos, they are very aggressive, and when you swallow, they make you feel like, ooh, this one it only gives you the breath of pleasantness. felt like you're experiencing something but you're not really there you're like a spectator in your own life you mean like not being in the moment I suppose I was thinking today I mean the one thing I really enjoy is riding a motorbike and, and pushing it really hard like and knowing that if you make a mistake it's either death or injury and that is when I feel really alive and I thought how is there something wrong with me that I have to do that to feel alive. I know, I can relate to that. I mean, you are so focused on what you are doing that you don't think about anything else. And for me, it's a little bit the same when I dance tango. I didn't know you did tango. I didn't know you rode your bike. I'm also concentrated, but I'm not thinking. It's more feeling. It's a dialogue between both dancers. You know, I thought about uh, your novel today. I don't think that you're an unsuccessful writer. I don't think that success is measured by money. I mean, every day so many people contact you. You influence people, you influence me. Yeah, well, it's interesting watching you doing your research. I mean, Gio did go. He was fantastic. What was it? The five, the five Fs. Family, friends, what was it? Food, football. That cheeky bugger, you only mentioned four Fs. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what the fifth F was, the way he was talking to you.
town over there. It's Positano. It's a very nice and small village. You can reach it in 10 minutes from here. I suggest you to go and visit it because it's very nice. Actually, Veronica, I have one question. What is your idea about the Dolce Vita? Uh, Dolce Vita to me is to live my life slowly, not thinking only about work and stressing for it, but it would be thinking about and living the little things I have in my life. And if I have an imagine of it, it would be to be with my boyfriend driving an old vintage car. If it's an Alfa Romeo, it's better. <laughs> but driving along the coast with the glasses on and feeling the breeze and feeling free. It's a long time I haven't felt so inspired and alive. I will quit my job as a librarian. I realize that I can only be creative when I love what I do. And I think, once we find that, everything else will just fall into place. Here I am, the one trick pony, only able to write one novel and then giving up. And here is Charlotte, actually enjoying the whole process. Is this the fabled La Dolce Vita she is searching for? Right under her nose? The ability to just accept the current moment? Should I try and write again? And not force it? Just enjoy playing with words, telling a story. Wow, Scott, what happened to you? Well, what do they say when in Rome? And that beard did make me look a bit old, didn't it? Well, yes, I think you look better without the beard. Last night, I was actually thinking about you know, what La Dolce Vita means. And I think the way we've approached writing a novel has given an answer. I mean, for me, I struggled through a lot of the process. You know, I forced myself to sit there and write. And to see you enjoying every part of it, you know, enjoying every part of the process, it really made me think that, you know, if you're not enjoying the, you know, the journey, the destination's not going to be any different. It's not going to get any better. You've got to enjoy the journey. And I think that's the answer to the Dolce Vita. You've just got to enjoy things as they unfold. I think I agree with that, Scott. And I also think that it's accepting the moment. Sometimes it's camping and sometimes it's five star. And now I have a little surprise for you. Apparently I was looking for an elephant, and in the end, I got someone who dances like one. I don't know what will happen between Scott and I, but for now, this trip has put us both on new journeys, and it's been one fantastic ride.
persone semplici e diamo la semplicità a tutti. La dolce vita è la nostra. Bene.